Hey guys, welcome to Wake Up Missoula. As you saw that Dancing Pikachu, that's been uh, pretty viral throughout the internet. Uh, what was released online from a YouTuber, basically saying that it's the full Pokemon Detective Pikachu movie came out. People clicked on it and they basically found a Dancing Pikachu. Yeah, I, I think it was released by the studio. Oh yeah. It was a red herring. Um, oh yeah, it was tef definitely a ploy for marketing and stuff like that. So it, it's, it's been very interesting because I, I like a read a review on it. And a lot of people have been being like, oh, Pokemon. Blah, blah, blah. And then later on, more reviews have been coming out, and people have been like, yeah, it's actually pretty good. Relax. Yeah, yeah, the pre screenings led to a lot of. Uh, it was mixed like it. to like now positive, so. Yeah, it, um, the mixed part that I heard was like the story is like slightly lacking, but the visuals more than make up yeah. for it. But I think the whole kind of prejudice comes in at a lot of the critics who are just like, oh, this is just a marketing employee to sell things. It's like, have you seen a Marvel movie? Yeah, it's have like you nothing. Seen to, literally any kids' movie before. They're all marketing toys for kids. Yeah, I mean, I mean, even like that's what they do with a lot of cartoons back in the '90s. Is the reason why they had those is because they were marketing toys during those yeah. cartoons. GI Joe, Transformers, um, Power Rangers, all yeah. of those. Just a lot of different stuff. Heck, even uh, the movie The Mummy had an animated series. Oh, gross. Oh, you, get, you have to see it. It's <laughs> Did it star Brendan Fraser? No, of course not. Why would it star Brendan Fraser? This is when he was like the biggest star at that time. Oh, right. Before when everyone's he saying, was desperate. It was, yeah, when, when Hollywood was like, oh, he's the next Indiana Jones. And then he just kind of like, he, he's there, but he's just not the next Indiana Jones. And now Chris Pratt's kind of taking up that role to being like, yeah, he's basically the next Brendan Fraser. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope he doesn't like end up like Brendan Fraser. Brendan no. Fraser still acts. What, what? He, he's in um, that show Doom Patrol, which I highly recommend. It's really good. I haven't seen that yet. It's actually. really good. Okay. Well, I'll check that out. Yeah. It's, it, it really follows the characters, for sure. It's like, well, is it, yeah, anyways, I can't spoil it too much of it. But. I don't know. I feel like after Journey to the Center of the Earth, it just kind of like... Yeah, I never actually saw that, so I don't have that I mindset of... I don't have that mindset of Brendan Fraser. It was weird. And then they had this it's the sequel with the Dwayne The Rock Johnson just before he started being like, oh, everything he touched turns to gold. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about some weather. Uh, there, a nice little uh, uh, side note right there. But weather is starting to get a lot warmer this weekend as we're hitting 70 to 78 degree temperatures on Saturday. Your high today is going to be 62 with some thunderstorms, rainstorms. Last night it, it, it hailed uh, for a little bit. But Thursday we're going to have clear, mostly sunny skies throughout the whole entire rest of the week and the weekend. So we're going to get some really cool stuff as well. I'm going to be going to a couple of the MCPS schools and getting some drone footage for a project that um, MCAT is working with in con conjunction with MCPS. So it's going to be a beautiful day in our uh, city of Missoula. And here are some of the uh, news things that are happening. And speaking of MCPS, uh, last night people voted in new members of the MCPS Board of Trustees. Mail and ballots for some of you who uh, subscribe to MP MCPS newsletters, while others could have gone to the Missoula County Elections Office. Uh, so far, uh, they had a, they're always looking for uh, new members to be on the Board of Trustees. It's a three-year commitment. And this is their... Uh, just their last election. And they usually try to do it, it seems like it happens every year because there's always a good set of different groups of people coming in so they can train the old with the new. It's not like an overhaul of the Board of Trustees. So, And also I want to give uh, props to Susan Hay Patrick. If you don't know who that is in Missoula, you're crazy because she's the one that's really helped a lot of the nonprofits and I mean organizations throughout internationally as well. She's the CEO of United Way of Missoula County and is the only American winner this year of prestigious professional fellow program alumni impact award presented by the Office of Citizen Exchanges at the Bureau of Education and Cultural Affairs. Whew, that's a mouthful. The two-way globe exchange program is designed to promote mutual understanding, enhance leadership and professional skills, and build last, lasting sustainable partnerships between leaders from four countries and the U.S. 
Uh, Susan Haypatrick traveled to uh, Cambodia in 2014 to provi provide her expertise on things like starting and running a food bank for families in need. Patrick's one uh, worked at the United Way has often focused on hunger prevention and relief and um, and Patrick has helped start a large number of food banks in the United States as well. The people she's helped um, involved in nonprofits range from missions, from environmental protections to women's empowerment, to child welfare, to poverty reduction. And you can read the full alter article at mazillion.org, or .com, sorry. State of Montana, a big thing happened is that the state of Montana passed hemp laws to uh, provide tax break for uh, hemp crops and growers in agriculture. Senate Bill 176, 77, and 78 all passed through the legislature without any amendments to it. The bills are said to exempt hemp processing equipment from taxation, generally revise the law around hemp in Montana, and give authority to Montana Department of Agriculture to set up a hemp certification growing program. Um, the S, uh, the uh, Senate Bill 177 received bulk signature on April 26th, and the other two were signed in April 29th. Last year, the state was the largest domestic producer of hemp, which is lar uh, legally classified as having less than 0.3% of uh, tetrahydrocannabinoid cannabis oil. Uh, which is the psychoactive ingredient found in its hemp sister plant, marijuana. The hemp certification program will set up by agricultural department and will give Montana growers and producers the ability to leverage the state's distinct identity on the open hemp market. So the Montana Department of Agriculture said anyone interested in growing hemp should reach out to the Montana Department of Agriculture. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, hemp is a great product. People make clothes out of it, paper, all sorts of wonderful things that just uh, last for a long time. Yeah, good export. Yeah. National news, Missouri River, that's a big, big hot topic, or I don't know if it's that hot, but Missoula River is at a record high since 121 years ago when they started to doing record keeping. The total of this year is 18.7 million acre feet of water, which the previous record was 15.9 million in 1952. The spring runoff is three times higher than the average level in Nebraska, Nebraska, Sioux Falls, Iowa areas and expected to remain high until November. Fort Peck Reservo Reservoir has risen to an elevation of 2,241 2, feet, up three feet from the end of March, and the exclusion flood control zone starts at the elevation of 2,246 feet is when they start opening the dam for the runoff. Once uh, it reaches the exclusive flood control uh, zone, water may be released from the dam spillway as quickly as downstream as uh, conditions permit. On the record-setting runoff of 2011, Fort Park Reservation elevation crested at 2,252 feet, uh, the top of the spillway uh, gates to close to 2,280.5 feet. Sorry, that's a lot of numbers, but this is a lot of water in just in the, in the Midwest. Of course, right now, Fort Peck is holding more than 16 million acre feet of water with a capa capacity to hold about 2 uh, million acres of feet or more. River inflow takes about 19,000 cubic feet per second, which releases uh, out of the dam at 8,400 cubic feet per, per second. So the dam is only able to release basically half of, of the amount of water as it's going into. So there's a lot of water happening um, in the Midwest. And um, for those of you who don't really know too much about the Midwest, Midwest has one of the largest aquifers in the, in the North American region, which provides waters to uh, tens of thousands of communities in the Midwest. So that's kind of what's happening in the news. I have a new Dublin stuff, and then when I return, we're going to be talking about some city council stuff, so stay with us. Whoa, this is like the cliff face from the movie Up. The only kind of up you should be doing is shutting. All right, I'm almost over. All right, now. Oh, what the? Get on out of here. Hey. Get out. Get out. Get on out of here. I still see you. All right, time to cross. Um, uh, okay, I'm crossing. Oh, uh, come on now, hurry up. Uh, don't rush me. Oh, it's so high. Oh. <laughs> oh, will you just be quiet? Oh, I give up. I just can't do this. Oh. Can I just go back? No, you cannot go back. The party's over here. Come on now. Uh, okay, it's like five steps anyways, and I got this rope to lean on. You just gotta believe in yourself. Come on, you can do it. Almost there. Okay, we got you. Oh, uh, that's just like that movie Vertical Limit. <laughs> you probably should not be talking. You are a monkey after all. We don't speak. Roar. Um, um, roar. 
Roar, Brontosaurus, roar. All right, now to show you how it's done. Let me grab my gun and let me cross this. I don't need no rope. Come no, on No, don't sass me. I don't, I've never climbed over a log before. Roar to roar. Roar, roar. Oh, wow, look at oh, that thing. No, it's so beautiful. No. I wonder if we can shoot it. What do you guys think? I'm going to get nuts. Let's get nuts. That's crazy. I didn't know that thing was that strong before. Oh, I think I'm a vegetarian now. Oh. oh well, you know, I believe if it bleeds, we can kill it. You want us to use guns on that thing? You don't want to mess with me. I'll step on your face. I feel like Hogan, but I ain't no hero. I'm just doing what I think is right. Oh, that thing's so majestic. We gonna kill any of yet or what? Yeah, sneak attack. What the heck's going on? That monkey gotta kill him. Oh no, how are we gonna get back? You're not gonna get back. Well, it's a lot monkey, maybe we don't have to... Oh. Oh, Timber, watch out! I knew we should've shot that monkey. Oh jeez, now we're gonna have to go on the other side to get oh, down. Oh my god! <laughs> Whoa dude, not cool. I knew we should've killed that monkey. Now you, well, maybe we can find some more wood over on this side. Who's got wood? Who's got wood? We sure have a lot of fun here on Wake Up Missoula. But the fun's over. It's time for some city council. We're talking about some recycling problems that the city of Missoula is not keeping up with, according to uh, this section of public comment. Uh, Brandon Work, he uh, is a citizen who is concerned about uh, using uh, single-use plastic bags. I have the right to help destroy the planet. I do not have a right at Target to pay a little more and punch one of the cashiers. I do not have the right to pay a little less and risk getting punched. My rights and nobody else's include the right to hurt someone else. But I can hurt the environment. Environmental degradation has been thought of as a cost, as an externality, as a downstream byproduct of my buying groceries. And we have acted this way as a society and as a city for too long. And now, according to a report released today by the UN, more than one million species are about to go extinct. All right, so that was Brendan work. Up next, we got uh, Alicia Atisio Romero. She's been coming to uh, the city council to talk, to plead with the city to uh, work on an ordinance to help prevent plastic single-use plastic bags from happening. So this time, she uh, gathered up people um, in this meeting, and you'll see of all the people at this meeting who are there to support uh, this idea of zero waste. I ask that any, everybody here that has come or believes I'm standing on behalf of our Mother Earth, stand up, please. We have come here to stand on behalf of our Mother Earth. And yes, yes, we are here again to ask our local government to act like we are in a planetary state of emergency and immediately, if not very close to, ban the use of single-use plastic bags and bottles in our city. All right, so that was uh, T.C. Romero uh, giving a quote from the city council meeting. Needless to say, many people spoke on behalf of the city's, uh, how the city is dealing with their zero waste by 2050, but at the same time with their um, zero uh, energy uh, by 2030 by replacing all the, uh, basically, um, the streets light with a more uh, effective solar-powered uh, street lights kind of deal. So there are a lot of issues surrounding Missoula where they want uh, Missoula to have zero waste value without having to spend money to get people to be zero waste. Okay, so that was kind of like a lot of the chunk of the public comment section of the meeting. You can watch the whole thing. It's it's a, a big chunk of the early part of the meeting, but we uh, but I'm going to go ahead and go on a, about talking about townhouses. Townhouses has been kind of a major deal, especially with bigger and bigger projects happening in the city of Missoula, and so they want to help clarify how they can make townhouse exemption projects work with uh, because they want it to be fast paced. They want to make more houses in a short amount of time, but a lot of, uh, so far, there's one construction, especially the Hillview Way project, is looking to try to uh, build a, a major project, but while using that townhouse exemption deal, which saves them a lot of money, but they're also building such a huge thing that a lot of times the city's like, I don't think this is a 
good idea, but we have to help clarify this, so they're updating the uh, TED ordinance. So uh, Lavelle Means with Development for Services talks a little bit about the purpose of this updated ordinance. The proposal will do is it will give us, um, um, provide us with an interim ordinance that will establish, establish some clarified expectations for proposed conditional use TEDs, TEDs which are townhome exemption development projects. Um, over the next six months that will address public health, safety, and welfare potential issues as well as the orderly and beneficial development of the city. All right, so that was a Lavelle means. Um, I'm going through a lot of these quotes and um explain this a little bit more. The issue in this case is basically larger phase TED subdivisions, which the city right now would require separate TEDs while the contractor wants one TED exemption to construct their three to four year project. TEDs are usually short term. Lavelle talks about some of the issues that we're faced with and this is uh, what she had to say about that. We are seeing even larger projects on greenfield sites. We are seeing even greater potential natural resource constraints. We are finding that inability to establish public connectivity as an issue, inability to establish off-site improvements as an issue, um, and then there are challenges to timing and sequencing and submittal needs that uh, have been arising and we need to try to clarify. There have been coordination gaps. With All right, so uh, the f clarification is basically they want to um, – more communication with the developers while at the same time with such a large project they want to be able to have uh, right of ways and the Hillview Way project is basically going to be denying a lot of uh, through ways through the section of the building because it's going to be right next to the Hillview Way Road and they just want to figure out a way to help manage that because you're building on a hill and it's going to cost a lot more and it's going to take a lot more time to do geological surveys and whatnot. Jim Morton, um, He's one of the uh, uh, people with the uh, Human Resource Council. He's in support of this uh, clarification of TEDs, an update for townhouses and TED developments. Any developer that brings a development to you is really already on notice about your stand on climate change, the facts behind climate change, your, your stand on reducing carbon footprint, your stand on reducing energy consumption, your stand on walkable communities, and your stand on what conditional use permits mean to you in terms of health, welfare, and safety. Uh, and I think this is a good start. But having said that, I'd also like to encourage you to think about alternative ways to engage the development community. All right, so uh, many alternative ways is trying to figure out different projects, not just TED projects, because TEDs have been very popular in the city of Missoula, and one of the things is they want to have figure out developers to uh, not just rely on TEDs to build a lot of their uh, infrastructures, because we don't want a town of just TEDs. That's just kind of what he's kind of going with um, Dwight Easton, he, he is representing the Missoula Organization of Realtors. He uh, he doesn't like TEDs. You know, he and the organization of Realtors just don't like the idea of TEDs because it really doesn't help with the housing prices. And this is what he had to say about it. There were only 196 residential lots created by final platted subdivisions. It is also notable that in those same intervening three years, only 36 preliminary plotted lat, uh, lots for developments were created under subdivision. The Moore 2019 housing report illustrates the continuing tight housing market in Missoula and the resulting increasing prices for housing stocks, making it more difficult to create buildable lots through these proposed emergency addendum, amendments excuse me, will not assist the efforts in creating more attainable housing in Missoula. And I'll have it note that through April, the median price is up 3% to $299,000. And uh, the $299,000 are for the average homes on the typical uh, ha uh, quarter acre of land. Um, TED houses, um, as of right now, for sure, have definitely broke the $200,000 mark in terms of buying a, just a townhouse home. So one of the things that I just really just kind of um, one of the bigger issues that are happening, especially if when development, Orchard Homes is a prime example of townhouses being um, built adjacent to a lot of neighborhoods and cul-de-sacs in that particular area. And a lot of um, and the neighborhood over there came to the city council to oppose the TED that happened at that particular time. Um, there's a lot of things that are wrong with TEDs. Um, one for me, in my own uh, personal issue as well is that TEDs are exempt also to ADA requirements, which is uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. 
So a lot of times they don't have uh, abilities to have a single level homes for people who are in wheelchairs and who have a limited mobility. So TEDs are not a good place to retire to, if you really think about it. But a lot of times TEDs are good um, in many ways. They, they're really helping with the uh, population growth in the city of Missoula, but it's also affecting growth in the city of Missoula, which we bring to uh, Jesse Ramos, who uh, is opposed to TEDs, and not because uh, of more housing, it's about the, the taxes that come with uh, people buying these homes. We have, we have no idea how these development standards that we adopt today are going to be imply, um, implemented in the future. We don't know what city, city staff is going to look like in 10 years. We don't know what city council is going to look like. And a lot of these, org, uh, these rules, basically, are very loose to interpretation, and it depends on the people that are administering these laws that, again, will create, create um, a changing of the rules. And this allows a lot of leeway for the government to control, control and restrict housing and, in the future. So I, I beg my council members, I haven't done this before, please vote this down. Let's do it the right way if we want to address it. But we have a, an emergency right now, right now, and it is affordable housing. We need to focus on that and stop wasting time with these um, ordinances, and not just our time, but wasting the time of the the developers that's going to be passed on to the customer in the form of another tax, which again increases the cost of housing. So please vote this down. I'm asking you, I'm begging you all to vote it down. All right. So one of the city council uh, members, uh, Jordan Hess, uh, speaks on behalf of uh, these um, TEDs while also responding to some of the concerns. Um, they have um, access problems, they have uh, parkland problems, they have problems that would be addressed through um, this process. Um, and so to say that it's not broken um, and to say that, um, that it's um, uh, overreach to me is, is a complete farce. It's, it's nothing but. It's, um, it's, an, it's an attempt by this council to, um, to uh, develop some fair regulations in due time to address an actual problem that's on the ground. Um, I'm supportive of the of the ordinance, and more importantly, I'm supportive of the process that will come out of this over the next six months, which I know from our, our staff's previous efforts will be a very fair, very diligent, very open process. All right. So um, the state of Montana uh, passed a TED to uh, help uh, combat um, affordable housing, try to get people on board with this, and the city of Missoula fully embraced um, the TEDs, and TEDs have been reworked and ordinance of changes. I Meaning, uh, Missoula is the largest uh, TED community in all the state of Montana, and they've been using this for the ever-growing population that is Missoula, which is uh, slated to grow in the next uh, about five, ten years, about 20,000 more residents in the city of Missoula. So a lot of that has to do with combating the ever-growing population. So, And TEDs are pretty much the uh, quickest way to build houses, and so they're trying to figure out ways to uh, please everybody, in a way. So I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Missoula's growing. That's it's, it's just just the way it is, you know. So what do you think? I'll put you on the spot. Uh, I think that uh, growing is good. I heard him mention, you know, I mean, just like lower property uh, prices for property is really important right now, and I've noticed that increasingly more as I've been like looking for places to rent and I'm sure you found looking for a place to buy yeah uh, I mean that's the thing that really needs to happen in Missoula because like I get that it's like a major city of Montana but it doesn't have to be expensive to live in and I, I've, I mean, uh, whenever I uh, get off work, I've noticed a lot of people going to Lolo and some of the smaller communities, you know, going on Brooks. They come here to work, but a lot of them live in those smaller communities. Right, that, because uh, they're cheaper. They're way cheaper. Very they're much. very cheap. Um, but if we made it easier to live in, like, closer to town, um, yeah. it would bring in a lot more, like, business opportunities. And um, I don't know. I kind of just feel like... Uh, real estate companies take a little bit uh, too much advantage of uh, in-town properties. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of the flat land in the city of Missoula is completely taken up and like it's being developed and being um, cultivated. Um, projects like the Hillview Waste Project with the giant like 56 unit townhouse yeah. deal. I can understand why, um, you know, they want to do the tax exemption. It's a, it's a tax exemption. It's like, oh, you get to save money on taxes, which a lot of times those uh, districts are usually incur the, the uh, owners of the 
area incur the cost later on once they buy the property. Yeah. I don't um, know. Yeah, maybe some more like independent ownership would be welcome. Yeah. I mean, well, from what I what, from what I've seen, a lot of these meetings is that the con uh, the contractors develop these sites, and then they have a property manager basically manage these properties. Yeah. Like they kind of have them deal with all that stuff and like you know have that because a lot of times once the construction companies are done they move on to the next project so the, the project's done and they kind of leave it where it's at so it's it's very interesting how just like mm -hmm. you know i understand the the need for places to have a roof on, you know over your head yeah i think what it comes down to is that for people my age like our generation it's uh more difficult to um get a start um as it were, yeah, getting started like downtown, you know, that's where most of the jobs are, and um, and most of the jobs have a tendency to be service industry type jobs. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's a little backwards, I feel like, but um, we're we're very uh, uh, geared towards our um, tourism department. We really want people to come to Missoula for sure. Yeah, but speaking as a person who can't drive it is very expensive to live near here where I work and um, anywhere near where I can't get to work so I think that would be a positive change I mean not just for me but for anybody yeah who plans on living and working near this area yeah, I mean, honestly, the best, uh, a lot of the best um, rent opportunities now seems to be the north side, because there's not too many amenities there for a lot of reasons for a lot of things to be expensive. But there's also a lot of interesting uh, neighborhoods on the north side. I, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking it, but if you live on the north side, you kind of understand that there's yeah. a lot of mixed um, uh, construction there, and there's a, there's a lot of efforts that the um, city of Missoula is doing to improve the north side, and you know, I. My, I have a suggestion, a grocery store. Maybe a grocery store on the north side would be pretty nice for some of the people yeah, living in that good. particular area. Maybe yeah. like a, a small uh, store where you can buy produce and stuff because mm -hmm. there's nothing on the north side of the track. Yeah, that, that would definitely be helpful. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, there's a few um, improvements that can be made to that area, but it would certainly be worth it yeah. if they did. Cool. Mm. All right, hence... I think that'll be a good cl closer for our city council report. If you are interested in finding a little bit more about your city of Missoula, you can log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. But once again, you can always go to mcat.org, or you can watch us on channel 190 to watch that and more. I also want to give a, a, some props to the construction crews that are working on the new library. If you click on this picture on our mcat.org webpage, this is the, wh how the uh, new building is going to look. So. If you take a really good look at this picture, um, at any part of the day, you, you can kind of see where you see the lines in the metal right here. You know how, see, this is darker than this side. Depending upon where the light hits it, it's going to change the color of the new public library. And not to mention windows, just major large windows everywhere. Even the new studio for MCAT is going to have a window, which will, of course, will bring uh, some curtains around here just to kind of block the yeah. natural light if need be. But it's, it's going to be great. I, I won't have to use the backdrop again. Yeah, you'll actually have, you know, natural Missoula setting. Yep, and you, I time. might be able to even, even see the M in the background of the shot rather than just the fake M. Yeah, that would be, be awesome. That would be pretty cool. Because if, if I open the doors, you're just going to see Missoula camera. textile services right across the street. <laughs> yeah. But I want to see, so um, they have an updated picture. And every, every minute they update the picture. And this is, of course, from the old library. Um, you can see the L and the M. And here's the new building. They already pretty much put the foundation down. You can see the uh, concrete they poured on the first level. We are basically going to be on the opposite side of this area. So right here, if you go on the opposite side of that building, um, you'll basically see the part of where Missoula's Community Media Resource will be at. All right, so I'm going to throw it to an uh, art clip. And when we come back, I'm going to throw it to Josh. And Josh is going to play us some sweet, sweet tunes. And maybe you might see Dancing Pikachu again. Who knows? But of course. But of course. All right, so thanks. And we'll be right back right after this. <laughs>
MCAT monitor, just have dancing Pikachu throughout. Next dude I just drew. Oh, next dub and stuff? Yeah. Just have the Pikachu dancing, just like voice his mouth. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> look out, look out, look out! Um, there's a lot of things happening. Mother's Day jewelry pop-up sale that's happening basically from Missoula Food Bank and Community Center happening now until Friday, May 10th, and this is going to be basically 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. The whole idea is celebrate your mother's in your life and locally made jewelry. 100% benefits go to the local food bank. Sunday is Mother's Day, so celebrate your mother on Mother's Day. All proceeds help stock the shelves with healthy, nutritious food for our friends and neighbors. Thank you for thank you to our friends of Bathing Beauty Beads and all the local artists that have created the jewelry. And for questions, you can call, uh, contact Amanda Caesar uh, at 406-549-0543. Again, that number is 549-0543, and it's always good to promote the Missoula Food Bank. Um, also, they got Tiny Tales um, at the Missoula Food Bank, which is at their Empower Place building. From 10.30 to about 11, you, your kids get to get experience in books, while at the same time, you might get a chance to shop at the Missoula Food Bank as well. Shop uh, Sound Soup and Sanctuary at the University Congregational Church. Um, it's the installment of their second Wednesday Sound, Soup, and Sanctuary concert series at the University of Montana. The Backyard Recording Consort, Joella uh, Hug. Joella Hug, uh, Lawrence Duncan, Nancy uh, uh, Sheld Selden, Catherine Skinner will be playing at the University Congressional Church today at noon. And it's only going to be 20 minutes, so the concert starts at 12.10, and it's followed by soup and a bread luncheon. Um, Missoula Public Library, Memory Cafe, this is for people whose families are dealing with dementia or Alzheimer's. I don't mean who are managing family members with that. Sorry, dealing with it makes it sound like it's a, a hassle. But sometimes it can be, but it creates a safe, welcoming, supportive environment, and it meets in a larger meeting, meeting room from 2 to 4 p.m. in the Missoula Public Library. And they do this all the time, so you guys can check this out. And it's through the Missoula Public Library from 2 to 4 in the large meeting room. And also, they have a two-hour class starting at 5.30 tonight at the uh, Zootown Arts Community Center. It's glass fusing orientation class. It, it's a great way to uh, make some uh, glass fusing, glass cups, some glass, uh, just basically, uh, you, it's glass blowing, a lot of cool from design to uh, slumber fuse, mold making, how do uh, ki uh, kindling process works, and glass aftercare. Um, I've seen some really cool stuff. Someone, um, uh, it's pretty funny because it reminds me of a story about a guy who, um, who is extremely violent at my school. He's like a really just an angry little kid, but he, most, he made the most beautiful uh, glass blown flower that I've ever seen. So it's very interesting to kind of see that kind of dynamic from somebody who um, tried to beat me up once, but I got him. <laughs> I know, now it's another puzzle piece of who I am. But it was defensive, so it's not a big deal. But I still got in trouble, because you always get in trouble if you're in a fight, no matter what. Yeah. That's just how it works. All right. Swing into spring program se se series. Missoula Public, Public Library is doing all sorts of things today, but they're doing a mushroom identification 101. 
farmer's market is not short of having mushrooms and locally uh, found mushrooms that they sell at the farmer's market. And Museum of Public Library is helping you find those mushrooms. So an introduction in class teaches the basics of mushroom identification, including how to use a mushroom field guide, the characteristics of various mushrooms, and the language used to describe them. This class is uh, brought to us by the Western Montana um, Mycological Association, sorry about that, and taught by the long-term uh, member, um, Egan Bradley. Egan is the uh, uh, microbiologist specializing in fungal research and util the utilization of fungi to solve issues of agricultural, forestry, and land restoration. You know what, I just totally remembered. I was in a fight that I didn't get in trouble for. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Age 13, I joined, the, or I stopped in to see what was up at a fight club. <laughs> And they were like, are you sure about this? And I was like, I think yeah, you just man. broke the biggest rule about Fight Club. You don't talk about Fight Club. I don't care. I'm not in it. Anymore. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you you I can mean, you can talk about Fight Club if you're not in Fight Club because you don't care anymore. It's okay. And I'll admit, uh, I totally, I was 13. I got totally beaten up by a nine-year-old. Um, it was an interesting experience. Yeah. Well, in one of my flagship programs, I'm definitely um, trying to train one of the kids to be like, hey, you know, you shouldn't use this um, film club as an excuse to run around and pretend to kill people. Like, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I know that a lot of, a lot of kids... Kids are violent. Kids are violent, but honestly, it's a good... Uh, lightning rod to make films about that kind of stuff just kind of show it but sure, yeah. i also try to be like okay let's actually if we're going to do this we should make it actually look good rather than you just like having a long have you ever seen a long shot of two people fighting it's just not like it's just really just like that's eh. that's like kind of what last week's animation camp was for part <laughs> of the live action thing i was just like trying to be like all right I, yeah you're like superheroes fighting each other like constantly but is it's there, looks like, let's make a story. Yeah. I mean, like, you have to ask them, why are these two characters fighting? Yeah. Like, what's the motivation? I mean, if you're a good guy, you, the whole point is to avoid fighting in the first place. Yeah, I think I asked that question, and the only answer I got was just uh, because it's a superhero. Yeah, but that's not good enough. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you have to be like, listen, kid, that's not a good enough response. Be better. <laughs> Do better. Yeah, I'm still working on like explaining storylines and stuff to, to yeah. kids. It's, it's a difficult process. Yeah, because I mean, I've I've shot my share of fight scenes with kids. I've done it as a kid, and they just look terrible. They're just like, yeah, pulling and grabbing, and it's like, okay, well, you know, stage fighting. They just got to learn some stage fighting, and maybe they get some good things there. All right, so speaking of stage fighting, MCT is putting on a uh, sensory-friendly uh, show of uh, Newsies uh, tonight at 6.30 p.m. It's the C Center of Performing Arts, uh, Broadway musical. Uh, it's Disney's, Newsie, Disney's Newsies, the Broadway musical, and it starts at 6.30 p.m., taking place at the uh, MC C C MCT Center of Performing Arts. This performance is produced specific specifically for people on the autism spectrum. A sensory-friendly performance involved a shorter show length toned down sounds and light and the visual glow stick cues for audiences and indicate unexpected noises and changes. The glow sticks are, are in the audience members understand when to applaud. If an audience member needs to take a break, the MCC lobby will contain a cozy corner uh, uh, with pillows, blankets, and a rocking chair, toys, and books. So it's a social story describing the performance experience is available, mctinc.org. So I think it's really cool that they're doing this uh, stuff for uh, folks. And, you know, it's, it's just a great way for uh, people to enjoy theater without worrying about um, disrupting it because they're just like, it's for everybody. It should be for everybody. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, sometimes it's like some people who have kids who are on the autism spectrum have difficulty taking them to movies in public places because they have a tendency to kind of stand out. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice gesture on the part of MCT. Um, yeah. yeah, I think, is that the first time they've done that? They've done this ever since they did. Um, I, I was in the very first Century Friendly show many oh. years ago, and I believe it was for Miracle on 34th Street, the musical. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we really toned it down, even though, like, at the, at, after the performance ended, it was just like, you know, it wasn't that big of a deal because there wasn't too many, like, big things happening. Right. But with yeah. Newsies, there's that huge fight scene that happens, and they cut down a lot of stuff as well. That's good. Yeah, yeah. there's some intense singing, and it's, just, like, very emotional and kind of stuff like that. So they kind of mull over some a lot of the... Of wild dancing. A lot of, yeah. There's a lot of kings of New York up there. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> my favorite part. Okay, if you ever get a chance to uh, watch Newsies at, in, the, in the Missoula's uh, community theater, the, my favorite thing is the King of New York song. It's the first song that comes back in Act 2, and yeah. one of the characters uh, played by a uh, Central High School graduate, uh, Hamilton. Hamilton Clement. Yep. He uh, does a dance. And he, um, he, it's, it's pretty much my favorite thing that, he, that happens in the yeah, entire show. We don't talk at all in the show or anything. Like, I don't really have a rapport with a kid, but I just love seeing him doing his little dance. Yeah, wait, can I try that real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Look at me. I'm the king, king of New York. York. It's kind of like a skiing movement. Yeah. 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 Um, it's check a, that out. Like, go get a ticket just for that. Yeah, just for that one scene. It's it, it's pretty amazing. But that's pretty much up for your uh, Wednesday night uh, events. There are a couple things happening. There's some trivia happening at the press box. You know, Broadway Bar and Grill. Um, uh, Thomas Marlboro. I don't. I believe they have bingo. And uh, Missoula Public Library is doing their second Wednesday night book group. And these are just some of the late night events for any of you who want to stay up a little bit later. Um, but yeah, I have another art clip for you guys. And this is also from the Missoula Art Museum. And then when I come back, I'm going to to tell you guys all about um, your Thursday event, so stay with me. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Thursday events. Kicking off your Thursday events is open hours in the makerspace. Missouri Public Library has a makerspace, which is great for people who like 3D printing from 10 to 12, and then again from 2 to 6 p.m. It is an, uh, a great opportunity for anybody who uh, can work on different projects of their choice using their computer lab. Uh, yeah, it's just uh, a wonderful thing. And also, Missoula Insectarium does a sketch of bugs starting at 3 p.m. And naturalists often draw or paint the animals and plants that they observe. These illustrations are enjoyed by both as works of art and as useful tools in helping others learn the physical features to identify the species. Drop in and try your hand at creating a biological illustration from some of the fascinating live specimens. And also, at 11 a.m., pretty much Wednesday through Saturday, you can go to Spectrum Discovery Center where you can learn all about science and more um, from Spectrum Discovery Center. It's 350, and if you're under three, you get in free. And also, here's something that uh, you might like, Josh. Rent Wise Workshop, partners, uh, Partnership Healthcare. Uh, they're doing a, rent, a free Rent Wise Workshop. It's hosted by Homeward and Partnership Health Care Center. It's at the Partnership Health Building, which is the uh, Weinberg Room at 402. 401 Railroad Street, which is pretty much like right by up by the Red X's areas. That's Railroad Street. And it goes from 3 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. And it's just basically uh, teaching you all about renting and how to be rent wise and just understanding, um, you know, how you can rent and what is fair. So, yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm fairly competent um, on the whole rent situation. One of my roommates, maybe not so much. But, you know, it's. Uh, it's going well so far. Yeah, but maybe but um, I I could probably use some some extra info. Yeah, because uh, you were saying that you want to improve your credit, right? Yeah, yeah, I had a plan for that, but uh, but my my the, bank basically gave me a credit card that doesn't work. So right. So it's just very interesting that maybe um, you know with these rent wire workshops, you can ask them. It's like I was like I'm having trouble. I really need to help build credit through you know. Um, you know, by renting. You know, I rent on time, I pay on time, and all that stuff. So that's proof that I am not a liability in terms of bigger loans for later on. 
That actually, you know, that is something I have to figure out because I've been renting from the same company you rented from for mm -hmm. a while, and I checked my credit report and I did not have any credit on it. Usually, it takes a while for it to uh, get implemented. I, I believe oh, it's usually yeah. like the fiscal year. When they mm -hmm. get done with the fiscal year, that's when it gets added to your uh, deal. So if you've only been renting uh, since, uh, you, you probably, November. was it? November. November 2018. Yeah. So I don't really think it's going to jump on board just yet until you've probably had a year under your belt. Even with uh, um, Neil, who he's, he's only been renting from his company for about, um, it'll be a year in July. Oh, okay. So it's it's very it just kind of like how it rolls over to it in the end. Okay. Well, then I'll probably have some good credit. At yeah. The end of that because I have always paid my stuff on time. I stay out of debt. You know. Yeah. As as much as I possibly can. But also very possible lately. checking your credit also affects your credit score. In some cases. A lot of cases, yes. And then there's some places that says, oh, it doesn't affect your credit score when you do it. But what they do is basically get a screen cap of it for you. And then when you refer to it again, it's the same, of course, because you're not actually checking your official credit. You're just taking like a screen cap. So that's how they kind of uh, avoid your affecting credit score through some of the websites. They just kind of keep it on record for you. Yeah. Well, I will do my best to yeah. keep a solid credit score. But you just need a... You know, you can't just get good credit overnight, and you've only been renting since November, so you have to yeah. you have to build it. It'll take a bit. Yep. Yep. Consistency is the biggest thing of about credit. I mean, my, geez, my mom has like one of the best credit scores I've ever seen in my life. Oh really? It's like past 800, and it's like whoa! Wow, that's. Amazing. I know it's like that's considered like great, and I'm I mean, I think my lo one of my lowest FICO credit scores is around the high 600s, which is pretty good. I really like that. Um, and my other two scores are in the 720s range, so yeah, I'm... That's a good place to be. Good. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about other, anything else besides, you know, it, it, rent-wise. You know, it's, a, it's an over-explanation of it, but Homeward is a great resource for uh, contacting um, um, affordable housing, uh, affordable renting, and just helping people get to where they need to be for their first um, home ownership. And also, I, I got a $5,000 grant from Homeward um, through their, uh, f by taking one of their classes for uh, buying your first home. So uh, definitely a $5,000 grant to help me go over the top w with buying my, uh, my new home. So it's just something to really think about as well. And you get a certificate for passing some of these classes. So that, and that, that certificate is basically guaranteed $5,000 for your first home buy. So just think about that. Um, I can't say enough great things about Homeward. Uh, Lego Club is another great thing because it's Legos, hello. And it's at the Missoula Public Library starting at 3.30 p.m. And if you're under 12 years of age, you have to be accompanied by an adult. But if you're 12 and over, they do it every day after school at 3.30 p.m. Montana Soup. Free Cycles is doing a soup, which is a micro-granting dinner, building community, one creative project at a time. So this one's really cool because you get to go there, you basically have a pitch, and you have to make a four minute or less uh, without using tech or AV. This proposals can be made by anyone, and, and it can be about food, art, kids, science, gardening, technology, something else, anything. But the best pitch gets the grants. And a lot of people who go there, they it's kind of like a potluck, a uh, grant pitch meeting, and um, a lot of the money that goes towards this goes to the best pitch. So if you have the best pitch, you go on there, and the attendees pay about 5 to $10 out the door, for which they get a simple dinner, a short musical performance from an emerging artist, and a vote. So you get a vote on your favorite uh, pitch, and they get money. Just think about it. Yeah, what do you think? If you, have, if you have a great pitch, and they do it Thursday, and it's starting at uh, 5 p.m., 5.30 at Free Cycles. A great pitch for like arts anything. and culture. Anything. And, if you have a great pitch. Anything. I would say more sculptures. Yeah. We need more sculptures. Yeah. And then um, whatever, it's you know, micro-granting. So it's like everybody whose money goes to this event, the money goes to the best pitch. And I think that's a really smart idea. Yeah, more sculptures. And it's competitive too. Because most of grants that you get are fairly competitive. So I think this is a cool, awesome, uh, the winning pitch receives all donations from the door. Yeah, you know I went to Seattle, sculptures everywhere, we need more sculptures. <laughs> We're getting more sculptures for sure. Um, Excellent. But uh, Missoula has a fairly, uh, I think it's 0.8% uh, of the general fund goes to uh, public arts in the city of Missoula. So um, I think the last newest thing that we did was the, uh, there was a mural that was made for Rattlesnake Park. Um, I don't know if it's Rattlesnake Park, but it's near mm -hmm. Rattlesnake 
uh, elementary school. Not to mention Silver Park had that giant sculpture that they built a while ago as well. Nice. Okay, introduction to juggling. You wanna be a juggler? Lifelong Learning Center does a bunch of classes and one of their classes is juggling. It's a, a healthy escape from reality or you can audition for the circus. This class will teach you uh, solo and partnering juggling techniques to give you time and practice through the continued practice. And this is a six, day, six week session every Thursday from 5.30 to 6.30 by Alex Payne. Uh, tangible Hope, the Wilma, in the time marked by Division, Missoula's Interfaith Collaborative, brings Tangible Hope, an uplifting musical and story-driven experience. Faith community choirs, John Flor Floridas, Joan Zen, the uh, Collard Greens, and the Missoula Ringers Handbell Choir takes the stage Thursday, May 9th, to celebrate community. Tangible Hope is a fundraiser for Missoula's Interfaith Collaborative, who work with faith communities, businesses, and individuals to map resources and passions in congregations, conduct community need assessments, and coordinate a network of congregations and community leaders. MIC consists of Family Promise, Housing Advocate Network, Recycling Works, and Missoula Works. And it's going to be at the Wilma tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Tangible Hope, that's what it's called. Just a bunch of musical great things and all the money goes to helping people in the Missoula community faith area. Cool. Yeah. And that pretty much it does it for your events. I'm pretty much done. And I think you want to you wanna play us out? Why not? Let me start with the... Uh sick crescendo and I'll just do whatever comes to mind. That, well, that was an interesting crescendo. There we go.